keep that tape for like Sean and Mike. I'm going to keep that tape for like Sean and Mike. I'm going to keep that tape for like Sean and Mike. I'm going to keep that tape for like Sean and Mike. I'm going to keep that tape for like Sean and Mike. I'm going to keep that tape for like Sean and Mike. I'm going to keep that tape for like Sean and Mike. I'm going to keep that tape for like Sean and Mike. I'm going to keep that tape for like Sean and Mike. I'm going to keep that tape for like Sean and Mike. I'm going to keep that tape for like Sean and Mike. The United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please, Marianne. Ms. Siegel Morris. Here. Mr. McCann. Here. Mr. Campbellone. Here. Mr. Kirk. Present. Mr. Ross. Here. Ms. Thompson. Present. Mr. Bria. We will begin with community announcements. I have a couple. Uh, Yardley Borough resident Mary Arada will be celebrating her 100th birthday on Thursday, Wednesday, tomorrow, tomorrow. Wednesday. Um, so Chief and uh, Borough Manager will be going to bring flowers to her. If you know her or live near her, please make sure um, she feels the love on her 100th birthday. That's certainly an amazing milestone um, Borough is proud of. We are also forming, under the PA Construction Code, a Board of Appeals. Um, the Board of Appeals calls for council to appoint trained and experienced professionals, which could be those who are licensed or those ha who have experience reviewing um, plans and code um, or, who, or who work in the construction um, industry. So we plan to be forming that Board of Appeals per the code in the coming um, month. So if you are interested in applying, please do reach out to the borough manager to send your credentials. That's all I have. Does anybody else have any community announcements? Easter egg hunt this weekend. Easter egg hunt is 11 a.m. at Buttonwood, um, 11 to 12. It'll be by age group. So that's being put on by the Parks and Rec Board. Any other community announcements? Hearing none, uh, this is public comment. So if you have public comment, I ask that you come forward to the table, state your name and address, and keep your um, remarks to two minutes. Any public comment this evening? Okay, next we have consideration of our consent agenda dated April 5th. The consent agenda includes approval of the minutes dated March 15th, approval of the bills list dated April 5th, renewal of outdoor dining, um, for Rosa Bianca, Continental Tavern, Vault, Yardley Inn, and Canal Street Grill, and approval of three event permits. Carry the Load, May 4th, Friends Meeting Movie Nights, June 6th, July 9th, August 13th, and Harvest Day on September 17th. Does anyone wish for an item on the consent agenda to be considered separately? Okay, do I hear a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. I heard a motion from Mr. Campalone, second from Mr. Ross. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstention? Motion carries unanimously. All right, police chief's report, please. Thank you, ma'am. The uh, monthly service statistics for March 2022, the police department handled 528 calls for service, issued two parking tickets, we issued 91 moving traffic citations, issued two criminal citations, investigated five motor vehicle accidents, and made two arrests, none of which were for DUI. And that is my report. Thank you. Any questions for Chief? All right, manager's report. As I stated, my report of 2021 audit is completely submitted to DCEV. I made a mistake on my report, so. Um, everything was great. The auditor really commended Patty for all her great work, so I wanted to mention that. Um, he does a great job with all the books and everything. Our second duck landed. His name is Dapper. He is in Buttonwood Park. It's prom themed, so I really anticipate seeing a lot of prom photos being taken there from prom time. And our newsletter is should be in houses any day now. I did get our copies and I should have brought some. But that is it for my report. Thank you. Any questions for the Bro Manager? Thank you, Manager Johnson. Uh, engineers report. Thank you. Uh, we issued our engineer's report uh, regarding the Yardley Walk. We understand they're still looking into 
uh, the stormwater piping, we'll be following up with them to see if they have a schedule on working on addressing the punch list items. Um, 18 uh, Van Horn, ML7, uh, the applicant has resubmitted the, the landscape sketch and we're currently reviewing it. Uh, we are, uh, we issued out a stormwater management review for 85 West Afton, Lot 2, and we have um, an outstanding uh, waiting for response for 160 Harper Avenue, and we're currently reviewing a stormwater uh, submission for 85 West Afton, Lot 1. That's the end of the engineering report. Is there any questions? Okay. Uh, moving to project updates. Uh, for the North Main Street uh, Phase 2, uh, the, the bid package is currently being reviewed by PennDOT. And once we receive um, that the uh, package is satisfactory, we'll be able to submit and uh, submit for bid for uh, phase two. Phase three, uh, we're wrapping up the sketch plan submission and we'll be forwarding over a concept sketch to the borough uh, by the end of this week. Mary Yardley Bridge, uh, we've submitted permits um, as I reported last, our last meeting, we received the Conservation District um, review letter uh, for adequacy, and we're still waiting uh, for DEP's GP11 permit uh, for that project. So hopefully, the next meeting, I'll be able to uh, report um, you know, if we received any more updates from Mary Arley Bridge. The PICO project, we were going to be submitting for the DCNR acquisition grant, but as we spoke further with the borough council, we were not, we um, decided not to submit for that um, acquisition grant, but we did have a meeting with DCNR uh, so that we could look forward to the 2023 grant opportunities and the additional funding opportunities for that. And that's the end of my project updates. Thank you, Mr. Foley. Any um, questions? Just to, on the PICO lot, so if we wait till 2023 to apply, what's the timing of when that would be realized? Like, what's the process now for pushing off to a 2023 grant? When does that come up for um, Real quick, the reason why we held off on that is because we're already waiting for an answer from another grant that we submitted mm -hmm. that we yeah. should find out about in about mid-June, um, and which will provide full funding, where this grant did not provide full funding. So we didn't want to spend the money to apply for two grants in, yeah, Got in one cycle. So if we do not get the grant in June, then we will <coughs> reapply for this in Got it. next year. And then on, the other only question I have is on phase two. That's a we're waiting on PennDOT, right? Correct. So how long has it been with them? Like, what's the problem? What's the we received the the executed contract on the seventeenth of March, so we incorporated some of the contract language that needed to be included in the bid documents. So we submitted that today to them, and we did speak to them, the, um, the reviewer, and he's hoping for a fast turnaround. So I'm hoping by the the next meeting. Um, you know, I'll, we'll be moving forward, and we last meeting we, we approved. The, we already approved, you, right? Not the ability to post it. Correct. So we're just waiting for the approval. Yeah, one. Correct. Right. We'll correct. So then we'll be going out to you know submitting it for advertising. Okay. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Other questions for our engineer? All right. Moving along to the solicitor's report. Uh, thank you, but I have no report this evening. Thank you, Mr. Closser. Mayor's report. Thank you. Just two quick items. So thank you for approving the uh, carry the load application this evening. And with that, we are just about 30 days out. So we will begin advertising that. This is much earlier than we've ever done it before. So, uh, so the challenge will be we'll be looking for sponsors. So you see that advertising going out. And also, uh, as always, we'd love to try to get council participation. Full participation would be amazing. I understand this is a work day. Uh, but the goal this year is to get a good solid group to walk from Washington Crossing to Feasterville Tree Boats Firehouse, and that's where we're kind of end the yardly walk. Uh, 
Uh, so that's like from 2 p.m. to about 10 p.m. It's a it's an easy enough walk where you don't have to train for it or anything like that. I think it ends up to be like 18 miles, which isn't horrible. You get a bunch of breaks along the way and things of that sort. So hopefully everybody can walk that or at least a portion of it, which would be great to see council participation. Uh, and again, we'll start to really advertise that coming up now that we're 30 days out. Um, and second thing is I would love to give Chief just a moment to uh, promote the Bucks Blue show that he did not do in his report because he's got a great guest in two weeks. In two weeks we'll have uh, retired Philadelphia police officer Jesse Hartnett on our show. And he was the police officer who was shot uh, ambushed style in the car a few years ago. And he'll tell his story about what led up to that and then the few years of his recovery uh, and his court battles since then. So if you have time, please do that. So that is from one to two. Same day as next council meeting. That's my report. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we'll move on to council member reports. Uh, Ms. Siegel Morris. I did attend an experienced Yardley meeting at the CONTAB a couple of weeks ago where they were discussing um, or creating their vision and mission. Um, I did, it was a three hour meeting, so I did have to leave uh, prior to the end of that to return to work work. But, um, I will be, um, they will be forwarding the, me the minutes and I'll see how that went with them. And they were just also brainstorming things to attract people to Yardley for a day rather than maybe as just a restaurant destination. So they were looking for ideas for that. And also discussing parking as usual. Thank you. Mr. Ross. Uh, no report. Mr. Furt. No report. <clears throat> Mr. McCann. Uh, community economic development met tonight and we discussed uh, potentially updating um, parking and outdoor seating ordinances and kind of coordinating that effort with the Planning Commission. That's it. Thank you. Mr. Campbell? Uh No report. Thank you. And for, as for mine, I just wanted to make the public aware, I've spoken to some members of the public already, but um, 85 West Afton Avenue received a demolition permit, which is the uh, Cadwallader's former home. Um, they, the developers of that property came to a previous council meeting and stated that it was their intention to preserve the building. So I did want to let the public know that that is no longer their intention. Um, I have been speaking with several people, including Steve Sanasiero's office and um, Perry Warren's office um, about any possibilities for preserving the structure. It doesn't seem like we have any legal means to um, reverse the demolition permit. I know I spoke with Susan Taylor and she had a really good idea of at least having drawings done so that we can preserve the existence of the structure with the um, Yardley Historical Association. So we know it was there, we know what it looked like. Um, I did speak with Tom Cadwaller in the center portion. It actually dates to the 1600s. Um, so he actually, uh, there's a possibility that we might preserve some of that stone for other Bucks County um, historical rehabilitation projects. So um, I'm working on a letter to the developer just outlining some of these requests that I hope council will join me in signing. But I did want to that to be on record and the public to be aware. So that's not a surprise um, when work begins on that site. That's all I have. Um, are there any discussion items this evening? Okay, other business. We have um, resolution 22-09, purchase of logger for EAC projects. Mm -hmm. Mr. Campbellon. Do you know anything about this? Yeah. <laughs> Um, the EAC's grant that they got a couple of years ago is in full force now, and one of the loggers did break. It's now time to replace it. The weather is much better. It's not going to freeze. Um, this is something that measures the water that's going through all of the streams and stuff, so this is totally reimbursable from the grant, and it's only about $350. So we just wanted to get approval to purchase a new one so that Michael can put it in. And we can keep this grant. So $350 reimbursable. I like the sound of that. Uh, so do I hear a motion to adopt resolution 22-09, purchase of a logger for EAC? Um, motion to adopt resolution 22-09. Can I hear a second? Second. Motion was made by Mr. Campolo and seconded by Mr. Ross. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. 
All right, our last order of minute business this evening is going to be a somewhat unconventional brainstorming session. Um, some of you may know this, some of you may not know this, but um, I've asked members of council, committee chairs to send inputs which have been collected. Everyone in the public will have an opportunity to fill out a survey which would provide additional inputs and then we'll be breaking into three groups to greenhouse three projects within each of the small groups. This is all um, going to be providing us data to form a five-year and 10-year financial plan. It's giving us some good data points to start on our 2024 comprehensive plan, um, which planning commission's already started work on. Um, and it's also just a new process for brainstorming and working through projects that we are trying out um, to work through some dead ends that we're hitting with some projects. So we have members of the public, we have committee chairs, we have elected officials, um, staff, and all interested parties are here um, to help us work through these ideas. So studies, the best studies, scientific studies, show that um, when a business meeting is started with humor or laughter, that um, new and fresh ideas um, come forth and team performance improves. So we are going to begin with an attempt at laughter and I expect that this may completely flop and that's okay but there's a Facebook group called you know you're from Yardley When and I pulled some very corny lines off of that site and I'm going to ask with no warning Mayor Harding to read some of them. <laughs> and while he's reading them, you may think of your own, you know you're from the only one, that you can add when he's done. Send them on down. <laughs> okay, so I promise first time seeing it. Um, so you know you're from Yardley when you are the mayor and they ask you to do awkward things. <laughs> <laughs> you know you are Yardley from Yardley when if you remember sledding down the side of the Scudder's Falls Bridge. Been there. Yeah, okay. You know you're from Yardley. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Or sledding off Dolington Road at the exit ramp of I-95. You know you're from Yardley Borough if you tune out the parking ward exchanges because you just walk to the bar from your house. <laughs> Did anyone else risk their toes, snapping turtles, wading into the water holes at the Yardley Golf Course or at Silver Lake so they could turn around and sell the golf balls back to the golfers? You know you're from Yardley if you listen to Yardley Borough on air with Mayor Chris Hardy. <laughs> <laughs> that is literally there. <laughs> Hopefully other people know this than just Yardley. You know you're from Yardley if Harvest Day is like a national holiday. You know you're from Yardley if you'll argue with someone about whether it's Yardley Pond or Afton Lake. Well said. Does any, have anyone have any they'd like to add? No. See, I told you, it could be a total flop, and that's okay. <laughs> so, um... With that, you will notice that this is really going to be a very different business meeting, and we want it to be that way. Um, so we have worksheets for you all to complete. Paula and I will pass them out, or Patty and Paula, perhaps. Um, so just work through them. The questions are self-explanatory. You're going to pick one short-term project and one long-term project to fill out the survey, and you will have seven minutes before we break into our small groups. Council as well. Sure. Uh, uh, I'm Members of the press, you're welcome to commit them. 
Abby would wait for this. It can be anything, an ordinance, it can be um, a staffing issue, it could be really anything. And these will be collected. If anyone needs more slips, we have them. I think we have more litigation. Complimentary car for the yeah. complimentary car for the solicitor. All right, we're gonna do a quick set change. Over here, right? I'm on public safety. Uh, so, that's great. 
six. I was thrown into the you know not in public works, I was thrown into public with you for that. I just put sidewalks in there. I think I'll get you maybe. I think maybe I'll make you for this exercise. Maybe. I don't know. Oh, don't even, there's no way we get a crosswalk in the middle of Wawa. There's a good chance we'll be able to get a crosswalk in the common is going to be in, which we're going to work on next. But I'm waiting for the sidewalk to be done, because once the sidewalk's done, then we can get it done. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> I think me and you are supposed to do it. Yeah, I think it's Maybe I'm going to go by myself. Maybe. That's okay. I'm off. Nobody listens to my ideas anyway. my project fits in. Wait, is this group A? Yes. Oh, thank you. Okay. Refusing to move. Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's not forget public uh, community outreach. Thank you. Community outreach is on your summer. The thingy. Mostly on which one? We don't have a lot that work. No, it doesn't work. We went to pick yeah. them up today, and your friend wanted the cheap ones. Okay? With the curly hair. <laughs> yeah, he's public safety. Okay. Where is this? Yeah. That might have came out of the Cadwalder house. That baby's been a while. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I should go get my eyes checked. <laughs> Oh, that's nice. Where do I scribe? My writing is atrocious. I have a good writing, but with a bad wing right now. You can take notes. Of, I'll take notes. You to talk to MRI? I got it back today, so now I want to. Uh, uh, I'm in PT, which is helping slow. All right, guys. But they want me to see the neurologist just to make sure everything's good. So. You'll never there's, certain, there's instructions that Caroline gave us as to how we want to run through these, so we're going to just follow our instructions and, and then uh, kill this project, all right? All right kill, it, kill it in a good way. Yes. All right, so first we want to go through the active, inactive, and wish list items that are already on our sheets, okay? So the active items are, thank you, Vanna. Vanna, yeah. Our citation devices, okay? So these are things that are going on or, or in conversation. Mobile so our electronic ticket writers, our electronic ticket writers, our mobile car radios, okay, replacement of our MDTs, mobile data terminals, mobile data terminals, okay, replacement of our PCs, personal computers, vehicle replacement, plan. and these are uh, replacement of the MDTs, replacement of the PCs, obviously for the police department request, uh, vehicle replacement plan. And then the tot lot falls on the way through community outreach. Okay, so that's so not according to. Well, no, I mean that would fall under community outreach. I didn't submit it. But oh, okay. Somebody, okay. Yeah, okay. Probably yeah. Okay. Okay. aware of all of that. Okay. okay. So our inactive things that have been talked and kind of uh, put on hold. Extension of UPS protection, sir. Yes, so we arrested the building. Some of it's begun. We just have to continue. What's UPS protection? The uh, uninterrupted power supply. So when the building loses, our computers fail, okay. and we don't have okay. power. Okay. Oh, okay. Replacement of service handguns. That includes weapons given to Borough Council and our charter solicitors. Okay. An IT security upgrade. 
Okay, so obviously security up here is on the computers and things of that sort. Okay? Those are inactive as of right now. Wish list. Obtain open space. Okay. The addition of two full time police officers is a wish list item. Composting borough wide. Oh, I like that. Wes obviously had to put that on. I'm joking. Ah, Holiday Village in Buffalo Park. And FAQ website update. Sure. Okay. And the Christmas tree is bigger than 5G. Yes, he already mentioned. It. Yeah, that's okay. So that's where we stop for now. Okay. Okay. All right. So now we're going to go through everybody's questionnaires, right? This little survey that you just filled out, and we're going to ask each person um, to share what they wrote on their questionnaires. And if your item is not on the list already, we will add it to it. Okay. Would you like to start? I'll go first. The non-borough resident has go first. I'll go right behind you. Well, I only have one. It's a short-term project, okay. which is more uh, community outreach. No, we've got, you're going to write it on the board. So on the wish list, you, yeah, you can just create a new one. Yeah. Which is attract, trying to attract um, bed and breakfast opportunities into town to get people to come and stay overnight rather than just come. I don't. I don't want to super eight, but you know, bed and breakfast. Good. Yeah. Bees. That's all I got. No, it's a good one. And they gotta have a good breakfast because that's really the important part of the B and B. Chris. So I know this is one that uh, is not easy, um, but I would like to see. A, 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 I think it's public safety, a crosswalk between Yardley Commons and the Septa Stop. Okay. I know there's no sidewalks there, and it's like dependency on PennDOT, but I think it's the same. So Yardley Commons, just put Commons and Septa. We'll know what that means. Commons to Septa. Yeah, there's no way for us to get that time. That's a good one, Chris. No, I used to live in the Commons, and I used to take SEPTA, and it's it's like playing Frogger trying to get across the street. I take no Marty across that street every day, like twice a day. And some people, as chief knows, like to fly down that hill. <laughs> Ms. Siegel Morris? Um, I said activities uh, for kids after the holiday parade. That could be like, uh, or like um, somebody that was I know that was on there, like Christmas Village, like you know, have, um, like those, yeah, the huh? holiday village. Yeah, yeah. These are short-term ones, right? It doesn't matter. I have no idea. Yeah, just pick them one. Pick them one of your two. Oh, okay. Or you could pick, give both of your two. Um, my other two, my other one is two additional full-time police officers. It's already on there, so we got it, which is good, though, yeah? I Sir? also had two additional full-time police officers, but I also have We're up to six. Did you have that twice? Six police officers. I have renovations to Borough Hall. Renovations to Borough Hall. Renovations to Borough Hall. Renovations to Borough Hall. Why they can still fix it. Oh, a light in that thing. In the pool. You already tried it. It's not historically appropriate. It has been deemed by the historical powers that be. Okay. Yeah, do whatever you need to do. Okay, I had um, hiring an additional full-time police officer, so we can skip that. <laughs> that seems to be uh, But I also put on there a river wall. Yeah. Right? Yes. 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 River wall. We definitely need to develop the or have something. Well, yeah, I mean, the... Was the Bristol Wharf is awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, outside of All right, Bucky, yours? Okay. Yeah. Yep. So, however you want to get this up. Pedestrian access or something? Yeah, I can be like the mission by Jerry and he has a park here. Meaning that we're going to be actually quite stringent if they make it a good move. Okay, so can I borrow a chart for a second? Yep. So now we've got to pick one active, one inactive, and one wish list item that we're going to discuss more in depth. Okay, it doesn't mean the other ones aren't. 
good and proper bus. So this is our active bus. Okay? So these are ones that have funding already? These are ones that are in conversation, maybe need funding, but are kind of being thought of and considered, already have some research behind it. Okay? So, we're going to just do this easy way. Think about this list. you got to pick one from here. Okay, we're just going to do majority rules. So give it a second. Okay. Anybody vote for citation devices? Any votes left? Okay, there's one. Right, good. Anyone vote for mobile car radios? There's one. Any vote for replacement of MDTs? Is there any? Anybody vote for replacement of PC computers in the car? Anybody vote vehicle replacement plans? I do. Anybody vote two, two for that? Anybody vote top lock? I don't know why that's two for that. Okay, good. Who voted citation devices? So do you want to talk about vehicle replacement or top lock? I would I would say one, two, three, four, five. Those five are pretty well the long. Yeah. Top lock's the one we all I don't even know anything about that. So we're gonna talk about the top. We're going to talk for our act. For our act. Okay, good. Like um, I, I think done. that it's it's kind of like it's always maybe kind of somebody's doing something. I think the Girl Scouts were going to do it, but they switched to the mural. Oh, okay. Um, All right, we got to pick one of these. We'll get to talking okay. about top okay. okay. Inactive products. Extension of UPS protection. Okay. Again, does everybody know, Chief? You want to? Detail that again. So what that does is we have partial building UPS protection, meaning when we lose power here, most of the building will stay on, but not all of it. And we, we lose computers and servers sometimes when they go down if there is a breaking service. So we want to have the entire IT system UPS protected. Replacement of service handguns, Chief, you want to give 10 seconds on how sure. we do that? Sure. Service life to a handgun is 10 to 12 years. We're well beyond it. Okay. You're well beyond that, did you say? Well, not for all of them, for probably 75%. And we supply the, the hands. Right. Okay. Do they stop working? Uh, they, can, they, they don't necessarily stop working, but they can fail. Parts inside begin to break. IT security upgrades, I think, is pretty self Okay. So you got to pick one of the three. Who votes for extension of UPS protection to talk about? It? Okay, it's two there. Who votes for replacements in service handguns? Uh, seems important. Okay, you do? Yeah, I'll go. Okay, there's two there. Who votes for IT security upgrades? <laughs> two there. Does anyone want to change their vote? I'll switch to IT security. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, so that's our inactive project we're going to talk about. So we call it? No, let's okay. hope. Let's hope. I know. I'm like, wait, how do they wear out? All right. This is where you're going to have to make a big choice. So these are our wish list items. Again, we're going to, not that they're not all important, but we're going to talk about one of them. So we're going to go through this page and then also the new ones you guys have. Obtain open space, addition of additional full-time officers, let's say one or two, okay? Composting borough-wide. A holiday village idea. FAQs on the website update. If you're a doctor or an attorney who wrote this second one. Attract BMVs. Crosswalks, uh, specifically from the commons to the SEPTA area. Kids' activities post holiday parades and or other holiday events, right? Renovations to Borough Hall. A river wall. <laughs> Better access uh, for bikes and pedestrians throughout the borough but to get to the canal path, things like that. Okay? So here's our voting goes. This is going to win with a two vote win. So. And you only Anyone? get to vote for one? And you only get to vote for one. Let's just see if we can get a. Something has come to you. Anybody vote for open space? Wes? Anybody vote for the. Uh, to talk about the full time officers? Oh, there That's the winner right there. Three. Well, we'll go through that. Composting. This is awesome idea. Holiday Village. Tonight. Let's just talk about tonight. Doesn't mean these things aren't important. FAQs to the websites. B and B's. I like B and B's, but I also like Riverwalk, and I also like composting. So okay. Pick one. Uh, I'm going with Riverwalk. Okay, we'll get there. Crosswalks. 
Um, I'm kind of leaning towards the river Riverwalk right river now. Walk. Okay, kids' activities after the holiday functions. Renovations to Borough Hall. Riverwalk. I'm kind of on the river walk right now. All right, two, so that's a good second. I feel like there could be two. Better access to bikes and to the cow paths. Okay. It's kind of like if we have time, we can do it. Fair enough? Okay. Okay. All right. So. You're very efficient. I think we'll have time. Thank you, sir. We're trying. To, I think we got a good group. So. All right. So we need a note taker. Who wants to be the note taker other than Bucky? Because he I, I'll you. take notes. All right. Awesome. Thank you. But I then it's almost like a fit, right? Did you pass yes. that down? That's what I'm good at. And select. As we do, you're going to provide them with the note taker sheets. Bucky, I didn't break your glasses, did I? Okay. Uh, <laughs> she's already commenting on the, on the box. Look at the box. The age of those things. Uh, that's a Ben Frank. Do you ever see uh, National Treasure with Nicholas Cage? <laughs> yeah. This is what it looks that's like. That's what they pulled out of that brick. Ben Frank, his glasses, pulled out of that brick. Bucky, maybe we should put your glasses on the wish list. <laughs> <laughs> Build that into the budget for next year. Okay, note taker sheets. Let's just make sure I have the questions. Okay. Sorry? Is anybody giving away plastic? Oh, wow, this is a lot of notes. Hi, Buck, you want to come sit back down? Yep. I'll come over here. Yeah, I'll come over Oh, wow. It's like a workbook, huh? This is like, we got, we got about 40 minutes of work here. <laughs> All right, guys, so now we're going to get in the flow and um, go through our... I guess we're going to, okay, so on the active problem, so let's talk, we're going to talk about top line. So just forget everything else, keep your mind on top, okay? And we're going to go through these questions and just get the highlights. So, with the top line, we're supposed to put a clock on it. Yeah, I've got it, I've got it. We're supposed to have 10 minutes on this, on the active project. Yeah, so it's about quarter hour. Yeah. Okay. So here's the first question. Why is this project a priority to us, okay? For example, is there a health and public safety issue? Is there an economic impact? Is there you know, infrastructure improvements that we think we need to have? Um, and is it a want or is it a need? So why is it a priority and is it a want or is it a need? Anybody want to kind of just start a conversation with that? I would say it's probably an infrastructure um, improvement and I would probably classify it more as a want than a need. Okay. Um, so the just to kind of answer those two. And so when it says top line, are we talking about improvements to the existing or? I think it's improvements to the existing. I think it's an, a lot of the feedback I've gotten is that there's no shade. So it's not very usable on a, on a sunny day with kids. So trying to add some level of shade there. There is playground. My sister lives in New Mexico and there is playground equipment that they have out there that does not get hot in the sun because obviously in New Mexico. Yeah. So I remember when we went through these top line conversations. I don't know if anybody else does, but you know. Uh, there was a whole survey done as to where it was going to be. Do we have one that already exists? You know, for example, Orchard Hill has a playground already. Where we're going to try to incorporate that. Um, I would take it a level up and say it may be a need. I think the concern is as a borough, we offer something for parents to bring their children to, and it's not sufficient in terms of being unsafe or improper. As a borough, we kind of put ourselves out there, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, making sure safety of a top lot, uh, obviously, is a priority. Usability have we, maybe, so. Have we had any complaints about the equipment getting too hot? Like, children? We've had complaints about equipment breaking, um, and we've gotten out there and replaced it as much as we could. I think what the challenge is, and we'll probably get there, is how do we police it, right? Because what happens is when little kids aren't there, the 13 or 14 year olds are there, and the equipment's not designed for them, and they play on it and it breaks. So I know we we'll get there in our question. So why is it a priority? Because I think it's safety. I think it's a priority for families to have a place where they can bring their kids and it's in town where they can then go get lunch after, they can, you know, it, build, it builds community. It's a quality of life issue, right? If you're yeah. going to live in a borough here and you have kids, it's nice to say, hey, I have a borough that has a great little 
Yeah, you know, you can go get lunch at Vince's or burritos right. or wherever, and then you can take your kid there after. Uh, they get ice cream, and they have a whole a few hours enjoying. All right, so the next question is going to be an interesting one on this. Approximately, what percentage of the borough cares about this item? Huh. I care about it. Twenty-five yeah. percent. See, I don't even know how many people know it's there. So you think that who cares about it? I think more people care about it if they knew it was there. You know, so I would say right now maybe it's only ten percent. But I think that number fluctuates. I think when there when it's in disrepair, a lot more people care about it. <laughs> well, is it, it as, is it the same twenty people using it and they're happy with it or not happy with it? So maybe we need to find out how many people. I mean, ten percent, if you think about it, is a lot of people. Well, I don't think we have ten percent of. You know, if you really think about it, do one in ten houses even know it's there? Let them care. About it? Yeah. How and many households have? How many of them children? have a, a one to five year old? Yeah. And then you have to say, hey, I want to travel out to somewhere too. A lot of people, you know, have a in Admiral's Playground or something like that. Yeah, the Orchard Hill one is, is nice, but it's not in town. No. No. Nobody who lives outside of Orchard Hill is probably going. Um, and so we do it 10%? I mean, it's probably generous, but. 10% and under. How about we say that? No more than 10%. All right. But I feel like if we advertise it and people knew it existed, it might be a little higher. So if we were to do whatever we decided we wanted to do to make this great, what would be a realistic time for that? Completing enhancements, repairs, updates, all of that. Short term, I think. There's not a lot to do. It's not a lot of space, though. Not a lot of space, but just historically, I know things don't really happen very fast. Um, 12 months? I think from the time of... the budget cycle. Yeah. So probably maybe 12 to 18 months. Yeah, it seems right. What could hinder or prevent completing the project on time? Is it cost? Funding. Funding. Availability of equipment right now. Yeah. Availability of equipment. In the current market, yeah. Yeah, other than that, we don't, yeah, we don't have to worry about any legalities or ordinances or anything like that. So there's no conversation about changing the footprint of the existing, because it's pretty small, right? There could be. There could be. I mean, if we're talking about expanding, we have to talk about either moving it or acquiring property next to it, right? Yeah, I didn't raise my kids in here to the world, so I don't know. But like, I think about the, the equipment that's available at some of the other parks, and it's really big. Like, yeah, yeah, but that I think the important this was designed as a top, so you know, you're talking about three year olds. Yeah, not like you know, there is the bigger playgrounds that have the big climbs and the playhouses. But I think that's a little bit older. But I don't have kids that far. Yeah, they're. Uh, I mean, the, the, the things in here are pretty basic, right? It's like a small yeah, it's, it's There's small like small. four or five things in there. They're like little yeah. rocking type things. Yeah. It's definitely not for anybody over like five. Yeah. Yeah. Is, this, is the project paid for? And can any cost reductions be put? The project is not paid for. Yeah, I'm sure there's probably grants. Okay. But it's not paid for right now. So it's not currently paid for. You may be able to get some donations or some stuff too. Yeah. Maybe see if like an Eagle Scout project wanted to be taken on or something like that. Is the project mainly handled in-house for through vendors and contractors? Mike, I would say in-house on this. This isn't terribly complicated. Yeah, we're not bringing architects to draw plans or something like that. Uh, it's really just us supporting the equipment, hiring somebody to install it. Does it have, what's the, what's the um, ground surface in there? Chips, right? It's be nice to have that recycled uh, rubber, so rubber, so rubber. Like the old rubber tire stuff. Yeah. Yeah. They just did a, didn't they just do a top off by the uh, 911 memorial? Yeah, that's right across from my house, yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's got the... memorial's huge. Like, is that a hot lot or is that a handicap? No, it's designed for disabled, uh, disabled children. Uh, uh, accessible, yeah. Um, I think, um, but a lot of kids with like, uh, sensory issues. Yeah. 
It's a great little piece. You get some ideas for It's this. great. Yeah. My kid's 13. She goes over there. I don't know what they're doing it's over there. It's a beautiful there. little park. It is nice. And then, uh, so far, what have we learned from this project? What went well? What didn't go well? The project now or the project since we've had? Well, the project that we're talking about. I think security is what has not gone well. Correct. Well, that makes security is at the current park. Yeah. It makes me feel like we need something in town or some place in town for the 13 year olds to go. So they're not going to that bridge or whatever by the. Could we, yard put, a, wall. Could we put a camera on it? We had talked about putting a camera we talk, yeah, We talked about the, the solution's got to be wireless. And uh, even if they came down to a question, even if they thought they were being recorded, we talked about fake cameras in the past. And, um, and, uh, I think BAI, BAI is covering a piece of it for us right now. Um, BAI is right there, the security company, right in that building right there. He's very, very cooperative with us moving those cameras around to catch what we need. I mean, if, even if it was just putting a sign up that said, you know, you're being recorded. You remember surveillance? Yeah, that might stop kids. What a stop me. But the good thing would be really, I mean, now it is. But then if you're like bringing stuff like that, you know, when we put that in, bring didn't exist. The whole wire was constantly in existence. Now it is, you probably could get a camera that's just. But also, if you bring your two year olds to the park, you may not like the idea that there's a big sign that says you're under surveillance. So. I mean, I got things pretty expensive these days that have a wireless camera that records and points. He races every 24 hours, right? Yeah. So we would know if we had this, we'd have it for 24 hours. It would be better if there was something for teenagers to do rather than sit around doing math and taping themselves on uh, Instagram. That would be <laughs> the next play. Yeah. Another wish for the skate All right, good. All right, so we, uh, we got in on her. That's good. That for 10, minutes. 10 minutes is done. Yeah. All right, good. So now we have a same discussion about... Oh, yeah. Ten minutes just started. Yeah. <laughs> it's twenty. We get twenty minutes for this. Oh, one. twenty for this one. Oh my. Well, we don't. We won't do that. Uh, Chief, we're going to need some of your help. Yeah. Yeah. Let me. Uh... Okay. So, uh, I teach security updates. Everybody, you know, obviously believes in that. All we hear about is cybersecurity right now. Small places can get. Give me my work phone there. The big one. Thanks. Yeah. Small places can be compromised pretty easily. So. Uh, the question initially to get to, we'll look to you on this. What's the first thing that the project for the tag is inactive? Money. Cost. Right. Yeah. That's the funding. Right. Yeah. 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 Phone a billion. So, since it's all about IT, another question about it, of course. Okay. So, why should we prioritize? IT security upgrades. What is what is the reason this is what or is this a need? This is a little bit of both. Um, we'll see the answer so, right. so we have to comply with both uh, Pennsylvania State Police and FBI minimum standards for our computer systems, including the portals we go through. Um, the wireless we use to get to the cars, how we connect to the state, and so on and so forth. We are running basically the minimum security upgrades right now, which makes our minimum allowed by law, which makes our servers vulnerable to attack from the outside. So for this, are we talking, I'd say front office and back office, but are we talking at least... We're talking the entire building, yes, because we're as good as our weakest link. If they come in through a ball, they can get through our wall. And, Okay. I think this is, a, would everybody agree that this is a need more than a want? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Is it software, hardware, or both? Uh, both. Okay. Yeah. It was easier to get. Okay. What percentage of the borough would care about this? 100% should, right? 100% should. This is one of those deals, zero, I would say zero percent would care until there's something like that. So then it was 100%. Right. But if we told, if we said, if we did your door knocking, we went to the door and said, hey, our IT security right now is minimal at best of the borough. Do you care about that? What do you think? I think more than 50 people. They would subscribe, and I'll tell you why not subscribe. 
almost everybody who lives here is in that computer. Right. Their the name, date of birth, social security number. Yeah. I would say more than 75% would care yeah. in that scenario. Yeah. yeah, I think if they understood the risks, it would be very significant. The only people I feel like would say no are like the libertarian don't want any government intervention. <laughs> At all. So let's just say over 75%. <laughs> How about we can all agree with that, right? <laughs> so is there a cost, Chief? Yes. Uh, not to exceed $4,500. That's it? Yeah. Wow. So that seems like, you know, yeah. why is it an active? <laughs> and look, that shows you a yeah. small town world, right? And again, we've been buying risk down incrementally. That's where we're at now. It's, it's left at $4,500. So we're at $5,000 left, but it's an active Huh. Look, I, think, I think we need to do a better job of ourselves there on this too. Feeding up our higher up policies because there's a lot of COVID money out there and all this kind of money that, you know, $4,500 to secure the borough security wise should be a check that comes from the state in two seconds. Yeah, it should be a no brainer. Yeah. All right. So we know it's $5,000. How will we pay for it? And are there alternatives? Meaning non tax funding sources of possible So grants, money come from somebody else? There is, absolutely, right? Yeah. Hit up Perry Ward. Perry and Steve, yeah. Um, we could budget it, right? Yeah, I would think it's a pretty small budget item, right? I mean, oh, relatively yeah. speaking. So how long before what we have in place is too old to do that $4,500 upgrade? I think that's going to be a lot. We did a lot of computer upgrades in the last seven years. Yeah. So it would be budget or through gifts from somebody else. Uh, what do you guys have, and this is more for you, Don, for you, Jerry, work that I right, right. just think that work that's been done. Um, what, what factors could increase these costs? Delay, right? If there was a Delay could, regulation could, additional regulation could. Um, being compromised could. Being compromised, being compromised could accelerate the cost. Wait, wait, hold on. Additional, sorry, what was the first one? Delay. Additional regulation. Regulation. If, if the FBI or state police raise their standard, then we have to raise with them. And then being compromised. Okay. What could decrease this cost? Outside funding. I mean, the, 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 the outside funding, but the market could too. Like we, we've seen computer memory over the last ten years drop exponentially. Um, you know, fluctuation of market could. I don't see it right now because of the, the supply chain. It's too short term. And it's not that expensive. You get to think companies like Dell or Microsoft or anyone that has money, you know, grants or gifts that they give out. Yeah. Is there a local computer company? Like, is there one EA? They don't even exist anymore. Is there anybody that got made a big EPA for computers? For David Applebaum? So, Jerry, what is yours? Right. So we've got the science stuff. Are there any are any projects being prioritized over this one that should not be? And then Yuri was pushing. Um, that's a lovely question. Yeah, that's a tough one. I mean, you know, some. It's like saying you got two kids, which we want to die. Yeah. Well, asked another way, it says, what's in the way of this being, this one being? What's in the way? Um, what, it, it, there, there's, we get $10,000 capital each year, and we have more than, more needs than we have funds. And that's all it is. So we're trying to get smarter around. Chief, let's take that outside of your budget. Is there, you know, the borough, maybe 10,000 the borough has. Are there any of these projects that we could prioritize? 200,000. Right. There's something we're spending in front of us for. Let's just say, and I'm not asking you to say so, but maybe they're buying new doors, right? Like these doors are great, but are they more important than IT security? I don't know. Can I say that? Well, we can say it's, it may exist, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe something budgeted already that uh, talking about IT, we think IT is more important. 
Right. Anything else on our net? That one's pretty clear cut, I think. Yeah. 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 We're going to start with two full time police officers. Not one. Because oh. <laughs> we work in pairs one reads and one writes. What would I do with just a reader? <laughs> Makes sense. See what I tell you about, right? All right, so uh, talk about. You know, Full-time police officers. Uh, why haven't we already begun working on this project? Why is it stuck on the Money. Yeah, cost. So obviously, um, a full-time police officer not only comes with salary but um, benefits, right, Chief? Yes. And do you do you have a, an estimated number of salary and benefits for a full-time police officer? You did on your sheet. Be, yes, I do. Would it be like 60? Introductory rate is around 60, right? Okay. Depending on size of family. Do you have an estimate for like the benefit load? So I know the court release 40% on the salary is typically the annual. Because ours, we did that at where I came from too, we were 67%, but because of the way we fluctuate here with single, uh, married, and family, those numbers fluctuate so greatly. I know I know the family here is around 16,000, and single is less than half of it. So what would a full-time officer start at? Uh, 40, 44,000. Okay, so and 16 is 16. 16 right? So we're talking about $120,000 essentially project. Um, to start annually. So cost is the, is the biggest thing. Yeah, that, that would all be included. So to get, get a thousand dollars a year in uniforms, um, training would training wouldn't uh, increase substantially because they come trained. Chief, what about philosophy? Uh, the philosophy of having five full-time police officers, you know what I'm saying? The Yard of has always been, I'm not saying it's the right way, but there's always been a predominantly part-time police officer bro. Do you think there's challenges, if we put this out to the community, you know, along with cost, do you think there's philosophical challenges? There, there is, I mean, but I think we could explain them out. Okay. Um, number one, the, the part-time police officers have no continuity. They're generally employed here less than two years. We spend a lot of resources in training them, only, only to have them become great police officers in other jurisdictions. They establish relationships here that they leave behind, um, where the full-time police officer invests in here. They adopt the culture of this police department. They maintain those relationships that they build and they, they use them. There really is a large, large unknown cost to the turnover of these part-time police officers. And added to that, in the new police world, it's now becoming difficult to find part-time part -time police officers well, part -time are going to soon become harder to find in a four-week All right. So, so why should, we've already answered this a little bit more, why should we prioritize this process? So I have something about that. So I always think about this, and I take myself out of being a counselor or mayor as a resident that this year, there can be things that are as important, but almost nothing to me that's more important than having a safe community. Because it not only protects, we're doing good. We're on our wishes, we're doing good. Yep, 10 minutes, we'll be good, 10 minutes. We got five minutes and 51 seconds. But we gotta get to Riverwalk. So, I, as somebody who's living here, not only does it keep me safe, right? Hopefully I never need to use it, but it keeps me safe. But it also keeps my property values up if I'm gonna be selfish about that, right? I mean, if I live in a community that has high crime, you know, I'm, no one's gonna to wanna to live here, no one's gonna to wanna to buy my house. So the, the goal of, of being safe is obviously the biggest priority, but there's other uh, factors that I think a lot of people don't want. So, 
It's a need. It's a need now. I agree with that because, yeah, it's being safe all the time. I think this has gone from a want to a whole set of I think with the change in the safety. How many full-time and how many part-time do you have? Currently, five and nine. You're counting yourself in that five. Right. Okay, so, so we have went five. from five to seven. Would that decrease the number of part time? It would. And it would decrease the number of part time hours we expend. So, therefore, some of the costs would be offset by a reduction of the part time budget. And I think he misses his mis I know he is a working chief. I mean, we have four officers and a chief, right? Correct. Yeah, I just know. What percent of the borough do you think cares about the work? I think it's probably close to the 75 percent, the same amount that we care about the other projects we talked about. You know, there's going to be some people who don't believe in policing. So, so are there any interested parties who would be against this project? Probably anybody who's against borough spending in general. Yeah, it would be more to spending than it would be the issue. Yeah, yeah. Would be the tax increase. Yeah. The, the only person who would have any sort of argument against it would be somebody who just says, I don't want my taxes to Oh, yeah. Understandable. I don't really see any other party that came up on the wish list, and then anybody had made that. So, are there any legal barriers to completion of a wish list, though? Again, no. 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 South Canal Street, there's a reliable access to legal issues there. How much does it cost? So it's only about you know, five, 60, 61, 20, partially yeah. offset by the same agency process. And right, it's part-time, so it's going to be less than that. I believe these are Probably, yeah, because of the amount of hours these two would eat, it would probably be well, well in their home. So we would probably have to factor in that they do get annual increases. Correct. Right, because that 120 is different in five years. But so are the part timers, right? I mean, yeah. yeah. They go up to them. So they have you know, offset. So how will we pay for it? Are there alternative non tax funding sources that are available? No, no. I don't think there are. This is a borough expense. This would have to be a borough expense. You factor it by budget. What factors might increase the cost? If we wait, will the cost go up? Yes, but in normal labor increments. I don't see any barrier to that. Yes, but in normal labor increments. I don't see any, any high projection. What about having to pay more because of the competitive market? No, because they're a contract, so. That's and we could get. I mean, the way our contract is scaled, the introductory rate stays even every year. And to her question, it's easier to attract qualified full time applicants Correct. now than it is for qualified part time applicants. Yeah, people are looking to find a full time job in a community like that. I guess the only threat in winning is not economic. The threat in winning is we have very, very, very qualified part-timers right now that we stand to lose if we don't. That's the that's the real. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, we got a lot of good people. Yeah, we do. We should try to keep. What factors might decrease the cost? We talked about the offsetting. Offsetting the part-time. Right? That's the big one. Other than that, everything's contractual. So. Yeah. Less need for part time to offset the cost. And then, of course, the uh, million dollar question are there any projects being prioritized over this one that should not be in the way of this being completed? Well, I mean, we just don't know how we answer that. I think. Um, you know, Chief, I think that what's in the way of uh, addressing this is putting a formal plan together and pulling that band-aid off and starting the conversation, you know what I'm saying? And taking the risk that the conversation goes one of two ways and you know, just keep pushing it out there depending on council's opinions and who's on council. You know? Eventually, we're going to have less and less part-time police officers and we're going to have a very tiny apartment with lots of overtime. Mm -hmm. At some point, I, I do think it's something that we're going to have to bring up for discussion. We'll probably have one. This is during my term. We're going to have to face this. And I'm open minded. Obviously, we have to weigh the, the tax impact on the people who get the benefits. But you know, if we keep churning good people, I've met a lot of these officers that, you know, 
they all go to be full time somewhere. I mean, I don't see why this shouldn't be discussed in the next budget session. It should be discussed every budget session. And look, we've all learned in a horrible, horrible way that the Israel is not protected from anything happening. You know what I'm saying? So. So that is cool. Yeah. So, All right. It looks like she's coming around to collect everything. So. Done. Just in the So the, the majority yeah. vote did not win the discussion? I will ask, I will ask one person if I'm just to report like I lost all of Okay. The river walk was not the majority, was it? <laughs> well, we definitely need What's to What's the number on the river walk? Um, the tie, three to three, right? Yeah, somebody like my bike pass. Three to two. Three to two. Like <laughs> we'll do river walk next time, I promise. Because that's the project I put on. I, that was <laughs> you know, my, I know that the, uh, the yeah, like, service uh, center is doing the electric bikes. Yeah. Yeah. I always thought that we should be able to like, rent bikes and like, go for a bike yeah. ride. Yeah. But you know, Chris, you know, I don't, we should talk about yeah. the crosswalk. Yeah. I don't have we a place to store a bike. I would go. And about improving the crosswalk at the firehouse. Oh, what? Because there was no place there. And then we also talked about them timing it with the firehouse. When it goes off, the lights can flash to stop the cars, too. Oh, yeah. Went great. Yeah, yeah. yeah so they could do the two cars to the cars on the same time. Yeah, I just think, like, the amount of people who come to set up train stations, we should just deem it North Main Street crosswalk. So stop these three crosswalks. So we get it. Yeah. Three. No, I agree. Just that. We're here. You need protection. Here's the problem. Yeah. Right here. You have to walk all the way down to the college. Let's work with you to work on it because that's the bus stop. You are ready. And you have something. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> I'm collecting the filled out. Alright, got it right now. Oh, okay. No, but like all the participants keep papers. Oh, you want those? Yeah. 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 Myself, Chief, and something and I know that our group definitely had some great ideas that I hadn't thought about or hadn't thought about in a while so each group if you could just report back high level of the projects that you talked about um, who wants to go first sure um, so we had a, it was Paul and Patty and then um, Jerry Scott and Don so um, and the, I think the main issue we spent a lot of time talking about with active was around uh, parking uh, no shock. I uh, can't believe everyone didn't gasp when I said that. Um, so I think the, the big takeaway is it's been obviously something that's been discussed for a lot of time and a lot of, there's, there's two aspects to it. There's the, what is the longer term 
plan or a solution or a proposal we could put forth working with businesses to get more spaces available. And then there's a more practical, I think, near term of taking a look at the ordinance, right? And I think it came through loud and clear that I know you mentioned some of this, Paula and John. I think you discussed it at Community Economic Development. Um, and Don certainly evolved from a planning perspective. But um, I think there's a lot of interest in being involved and in pushing that as a key priority for council of this year, this term, doing that ordinance, which I know was on the agenda anyway, but that was the biggest thing for active. Um, I think inactive, pretty clear consensus around um, uh, EV and of the uh, meetings um, and, and be having the ability to hybrid both be in person and to Zoom, not only for council meetings, but for things like zoning and HARB and, and other uh, of our committees that, that meet. And then in terms of wish list, we want to walk on the river. We want a river walk down by the river. Do we have the same group? We talk about the same thing. So, um, John, you want to cover what we talked about? Sure. We kind of focus more on the inactive project, new projects, because a lot of the active projects are already so far down the road. Um, and also, there's a lot of grant supply. But we did talk about access to the river. And uh, one of the points we were talking about, more passive access to the river, um, where the current access our annex is, uh, since we already own the property. Um, some of the group thought maybe it wasn't the best use for storage that a either maybe we don't even need the building and it could be parking and then it could be access for you know whether it be um, you know kayaks or, or other type of uh, things that you could walk down to the river from the neighborhoods and things like that so some people are talking about that access to the river and then um, kind of it, it shouldn't be something that would be too expensive, especially if we didn't put in a dock or just maybe have some stairs or just simple access points that it could be even something that would be less than $25,000 overall. But then we also even discussed, like, is there an opportunity to do something with the building too? I mean, could there be some educational use for the building about the tied into the river and canal use um, that was kind of all floated? Um, and, and we also distinguished it from like a boat ramp. Um, and would they have access not, not too far away? Um, so that was kind of something we talked about, and also even you know additional things thrown out there were you know even possibly adding a restroom for people you know, using the canal and that river access. Um, so it's just something that was kind of put out there, um, and then we also talked about two other projects. So that was uh, the access to the river, but then there was also access to the canal. Um, so some people talked about some of the pathways and things like that that have been eroded. You know, is there a possibility to kind of work with this and um, have some better access points for, so people can uh, access the canal, whether it be by foot or even by bike? And we even got a discussion about some of the, uh, one of the gas stations running and electric or electric bicycles, um, and kind of talking about expanding that accessibility to the canal from town. Uh, and then finally, um, the project we also discussed was revitalizing and renovating Barrel Hall um, that ideally uh, we'd like to see uh, Barrel and Council Chambers downstairs so that everyone could access it and not have to go up the stairs. So that was one thing and we talked about uh, even the potential for grants um, with that and then even talking about, you know, maybe what is the use of the rec room? is something that came up as well. Is there a chance to move the offices upstairs and kind of really rethink this? And it could also lead to other opportunities like an EV charging station too, um, if we were able to put some real money in revitalizing not only the outside, uh, but also the inside and how we use this. And uh, we even kind of got into discussion of other things like, you know, what do we use? Uh, the shed or the barn over uh, behind the bicycle shop and, you know, what's the best you know, use of barrel resources, um, whether it be for storage or whatever we need as a barrel, how can we best use them? And if we have an opportunity to grant grants and funding to revitalize it, how do we come up with a plan that uh, would serve all of our needs and the barrel's needs and the different workers and uh, departments? Thanks, John. Mayor? Yeah, so first of all, thank you for creating this project. It was absolutely um, interesting and seemed beneficial. So. Uh, in terms of our active projects, we talked uh, about the top lot. Um, I think the two issues were the, the focus of the discussion 
and one was based around the question, what percentage of the borough cares about this? And, and you know, for a tot lot, we were just saying, you know, obviously the people who care about it are probably passionate, but what percentage is that in the borough that have children between the ages of, what's it targeting, you know, one to three, essentially, or something one like that? One to five. One to five. So it's probably a small percentage, so that put a little bit of a hurdle to it. Um, the second challenge that we saw with the top lot that through experience is security is an issue because uh, it seems the most of the damage to the facility is done by children who are bigger than one to five or older than one to five, let's say. Uh, so security has been a challenge in the past there. But um, I think the biggest conversation was the percentage of the people that, that uh, would focus on that. Uh, for inactive projects, we talked about IT security upgrades uh, for not only the police department, but for the front offices too, so for Borough Hall wide. Um, what shocked us uh, was the fact that this was an inactive project where the cost was less than $5,000 probably. Uh, this seemed to be something that we thought would be very important to everyone, especially in the world we're living in now with IT security and the fact that you know, everyone's information probably runs somewhere through this borough hall sometime. Uh, so for what seems like a very minimal investment, uh, we were surprised that that's gotten moved to the inactive side. So that was the conversation there, but we did think that that, although inactive, was probably something that could be done with some creative thinking. And then for the Wishlist Project, um, although we wanted to talk about the river walk, that was a big fight in our, in our group also, uh, we did talk about the addition of two full-time police officers in the borough. Um, and again, we thought that, that was important to the borough. Uh, the, the conversation there revolved around cost to do so, uh, more than the philosophy. But uh, you know, we had some good conversations about where policing is going. With in terms of the part timers that, that we have, it's harder to get part time police officers now. And uh, we actually have some very talented part time police officers that you know we would uh, not like to lose to full time jobs somewhere else. So. The cost discussion was the biggest thing there, uh, but we did come up with some creative ways of, you know, the benefits from hiring full time would be decreased on part time needs, so the cost would kind of help offset each other. It wouldn't be complete, there would be an expense. So it looks like it's probably a budgetary conversation at the time for that um, request. So uh, that's where we went on that. Thank you. So, um this was really an activity to shake off kind of a lot of the inactivity that we've been experiencing throughout COVID. We've been um, backlogged with a lot of administrative stuff as, as a council, um, but it's time to get back to work on a lot of these inactive and wish list projects. So we'll be prioritizing those that don't require funding um, sooner than the ones that we have to secure funding for, but I, I mentioned it within my small group and maybe earlier. We'll be synthesizing all of this information into an informal report that will be available to the public, but we'll also you know, be um, giving it to planning commission, um, because they're starting to work on the comprehensive plan, um, but also coming up with that five year and 10 year financial plan. Um, because everything on the wish list, I think, at least in my group, would require grant funding. So we need to start finding those grants and securing those grants sooner rather than later, or um, they will remain on the wish list until the end of time. Um, any other closing remarks or questions from the public? Yes. Would it be possible to do the simple, someone with a, with a cell phone, take pictures of each of those charts, and so that we could capture so all the ideas that, uh, and share them with the people, at least the people who are here, it would be beneficial. Yes, absolutely. Any other questions or comments? All right, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Of course. Everybody turn in their sheets.